I'm Daniel Perlmutter, and I'm the writer and director of Big News from Grand Rock. Okay, good morning, everybody. So, it's another week, another paper. What is the big news in Grand Rock? Barbara, let's start with you. Well, I've got a story about vandalism on Water Street. The police have no leads. Uh, why don't we get some reactions from local businesses? You know, ask around the community what people think. I'm not going back there today. You, no. Okay, you can go back tomorrow. Or you can make some calls from your desk. Okay, that's fine. All right, great. Okay. What else? Big news from Grand Rock is the story of Leonard Crane, and he's the editor of his hometown newspaper. And like a lot of newspapers, uh, his the ledger, the weekly ledger, is facing tough times and is actually about to go bankrupt. Phil, what do you got for yes, me? Yes, sir. Man? No, I am doing a story on Wendy Carlson. Okay, she bought a lottery ticket. Oh, great. How much did she win? Nothing yet. She hasn't won. The, the still story. waiting. Still waiting on the... So she has a ticket, she just hasn't won the... Hasn't announced the numbers yet? Maybe two. She maybe bought two tickets. That is possible. She wasn't sure or you're not sure? I'm not sure. Okay. But you see, I mean, if she had, I just wonder if that's a, a news story yet. I mean, if she'd won the lottery, that's that's huge. That's life changing. That's a great story. But not winning the lottery, that's, um, that's everybody doesn't win the lottery. Right. Okay? Absolutely. Do you understand? Absolutely. Yeah. You have anything else for me? Big news from Grand Rock, Leonard Crane, takes it upon himself to try to save uh, the, the Weekly Ledger, which is a, a paper that's existed for over 80 years. And that is where they're doing secret experiments. We don't know that for a fact. Oh, come on. Look, it's suspicious. I'll give you that. And to try and save the paper, he starts making up stories, hoping the new stories will attract attention and boost the readership. And he's actually making up the stories based on movies that he's renting from his local video store. I read your article. Oh, yeah? Yeah, it was good. Thank you. Yeah, very similar to the movie. You know, maybe it was a little similar, I guess. Yeah. So you want to the movie? That'd be great. And it works until he gets a little too big for his britches and bites off a bit more than he can chew in terms of the kind of story that he tries to pass off as fact. Well, one of his stories attracts the attention of a reporter from a big city who comes to write a follow-up, and that gets Leonard in some trouble. It's, um, it's possible I got a couple of my facts a little confused. This story has just now gone national. A national story. You know, I think this is just a misunderstanding. I mean, if, if I could get Lucy to, to, to write a, an explanation, you know, what, what really happened. How could you do this? I'm, I'm telling you, Stan, I could clear this all up. No, you won't. You're fired. Yeah, the idea that someone was just making up stories seemed like it wasn't quite enough there. There was something missing if it was just a reporter just making up his own stories. And then, I don't know, I think it was larger than life the film was on tv and i heard it in the background and it just struck me that it would be so funny if he was you know watching these old movies and that's where he was getting the ideas for his news stories and, and it, it kind of added uh, something that was missing from the movie i set out just to tell this story but it turned out to be kind of a family movie that you know it's a very sweet movie it's kind of charming and it, and it just has, has a kind of nice quality to it it's not there's no like anything overtly sexual or real language to it. It just kind of ended up being this kind of family movie. And I think a part of that is that a big inspiration for me for the film and the tone of the film was these kind of screwball comedies from the 30s and 40s in the films of uh, Preston Sturges or Ernst Lubitsch and uh, coming from that. But taking that kind of sensibility and that pacing and that tone and marrying it to a story that was set in a real contemporary town and with real characters, even if they're pushed just a little bit to, towards that comic uh, sensibility. He's just desperately trying to find interesting stories. I think that probably in some way his own life is not that exciting, so he tries to find uh, things to be excited about. So when he can't find them, he fabricates them. He has these aspirations his whole life to become a journalist, you know, move to the big city, the North American big city, and uh, with its, um, you know, working at the Citizen, he did it for about four months in the Metro desk, and then his mother fell ill. He had to go back home uh, to take care of her, 
and unfortunately, you know, she ended up passing away, and he's sort of been stuck. It's already the best for him. He doesn't have to make the best of it. It's sort of where he's meant to be. So um, he realizes that being a bigger fish in this small pond is actually is what he's better suited to. And he's maybe more in love with the people there and the town itself than he gave himself credit for. I think he gets a little drunk off the idea that these stories are working and, some, and, and in that forgets that they're all complete lies. The, the townspeople are all reading the paper, even the, the, the guy, the normally miserable guy who delivers the papers to him at the crack of dawn is like, hey, great story last you know, in the paper this week. So I think he's finally getting a taste of what it's like to be uh, appreciated and good at his job. Unfortunately, it's all a lie. Now, Daniel actually saw me in a play that I did this February with David Rial, who plays Kyle. And, uh, you know, I was on stage for the whole hour just rambling. And I think he somehow saw that that was a, a way into this movie. So then I got to be the lead in the movie. So I'm in like every scene in this thing. So there's like four scenes I'm not in. So if you don't like me, don't go see this movie. Do you know what I mean? That's my advice. I think it was just really well written. And uh, the first time I did a read through at the CFC, and it was really easy to sort of, I don't know, find the beats or play with the characters really quickly. And I just thought the writing was so great in that sense that there wasn't really much acting involved, which is great because I have very little skills. So I could just sort of follow around. And then meeting Daniel was, he's like the bomb. He's like really fantastic to work with. He has this great way of letting you feel completely free uh, to play with, you know, the other actors, with the script a bit. Okay, listen, I don't know what's going on here, but my room's been searched and I think I have been followed. Well, did you want me to call the cops? No, no, we don't call the police. We have a story here. Yeah, and we need to find out what's going on. But were you robbed? No, I, I wasn't. I wasn't robbed because I think someone's trying to find out what I know because I think we have a story. I really felt like all the background work that I did in my character, I really thought I had a really good hold of it in the sense that it's very typical. You, um, well, for Lucy, in the sense that She's a city person, she just really wants to be in the city, her career's in the city, there's no way to advance yourself by being in a smaller community. So it was really just about coming here and getting the story and then sort of getting back. But actually, this is the great thing, but when you meet another actor working with Ennis, it was like this complete confusing relationship immediately develops between the two of them about how he relates to things in a smaller community. And I com immediately adopted that as Lucy. I'm almost envious of the fact that he's just so personable, his ease with people, and then I start to see my faults as a reporter immediately when I see Leonard, which is kind of crazy because he's actually lying and making up stories, which is the thing that you should do as a reporter. The relationship that you have with any actor is quite unique, but also what helps people feel the freedom to improv or add or play comes to it definitely from the director and the producers, that there is that freedom for that to happen and gives you that calm place that you can just be like, I'm gonna add to what's already really great and hope that it works. It's a wonderful Frank Capra-esque kind of movie, a thing that we have known about for years. We've been, we've been uh, enjoying for many, many years. Back to storytelling again. You know, I just happened to uh, like it well enough to uh, not want to miss out on the chance. You know, otherwise I would have, uh, I would have lost a, a tremendous opportunity. And it's just one of those lovely, lovely films that come along once in a lifetime. I, Good material is so hard to come by. It says that the ledger prints lies. And, and not just lies. But we think people are so stupid, we don't even bother to make up stories. We just use old movie plots. I don't think anyone's stupid. Really. You know, I think this is just a misunderstanding. He has an instinct to not overdo, even as a comedian. There's something about him. He has relied on his own instincts quite a bit, and that has worked for him. Every day has been a joy in the shooting of it and, and a promise of things to come for it. Okay, good morning, everybody. So, it's another week. 
Another paper. What is the big news in Grand Rock? Barbara, let's start with you. Well, I've got a story about vandalism on Water Street. The police have no leads. Uh, why don't we get some reactions from local businesses? You know, ask around the community what people think. I'm not going back there today. No. Okay, you can go back tomorrow. Or you can make some calls from your desk. Okay, that's fine. All right, great. Okay. What else? Uh, Amanda. I wrote a story on students visiting the senior center. That's not very good. No. I can do something else. No, that's great. Students visiting the senior center. That's fantastic. I'll work on it. All right. Bill, what do you got for yes, me? Yes, sir. No, I am doing a story on Wendy Carlson. Okay, she bought a lottery ticket. Oh, great. How much did she win? Nothing yet. She hasn't won. The, the still ticket. waiting. Still waiting on the... So she has a ticket. She just hasn't won the... Hasn't announced the numbers yet? Maybe two. She maybe bought two tickets. That is possible. She wasn't sure or you're not sure? I'm not sure. Okay. But you see, I mean, if she had... I just wonder if that's a, a news story yet. I mean, if she'd won the lottery, that's... That's huge. That's life changing. That's a great story. But not winning the lottery, that's, um, that's everybody doesn't win the lottery. All right. Okay? Absolutely. Do you understand? Absolutely. Yeah. Do you have anything else for me? No. I read your article. Oh, yeah? Yeah, it was good. Thank you. Yeah, very similar to the movie. No, maybe it was a little similar, I guess. Yeah. So you want another movie? That'd be great. Something like this? Well, I mean... Do you have anything else like that? I got something. Astro Industries, they do special projects. Special projects, like building labs. They don't say. Well, did they um, do any work around town lately? What's that? Work permit. 337 Concession Road 4. And that is the mayor's farm. Okay. Okay. And that is where they're doing secret experiments. We don't know that for a fact. Oh, come on. Look, it's suspicious. I'll give you that. But we need proof. OK, listen. I don't know what's going on here, but my room's been searched, and I think I have been followed. Well, did you want me to call the cops? No, no. We don't call the police. We have a story here, yeah, and we need to find out what's going on. Well, were you robbed? No, I, I wasn't. I wasn't robbed, because I think someone's trying to find out what I know, because I think we have a story. From movies, Leonard? What the hell have you been doing? Has this whole idea been just a, a pile of horseshit? It's, um, it's possible I got a couple of my facts a little confused. This story has just now gone national. A national story. It says that the ledger prints lies. And, and not just lies. But we think people are so stupid, we don't even bother to make up stories. We just use old movie plots. I don't think anyone's stupid. Really. You know, I think this is just a misunderstanding. I mean, if I, if I could get Lucy to, to, to write a, an explanation, you know, what, what really happened. How could you do this? I'm telling you, Stan, I can clear this all up. No, you won't. You're fired. Stan, wait a second. Don't start with me. I'll just pack your things and go. I need you out of this office. Stan. Wait, please, just give me a second to explain. I'll go. And do me a favor and don't talk to anyone about it. I'll have my lawyer call you soon. Okay.
things with Dave. It's fun. It's pretty amazing. This is going to be Whatever great, guys. I'm liking the power. Come on. <laughs> and frame. Hey, you two. How's the story going? Uh, uh, staying good. Good. Well, Contact. 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 We're going to start. Contact. 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 Contact.